All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the last in a series of videos where we're taking another look at particle motion, uh, where we're going to say how can we use integrals to uh, determine where the position, velocity, or acceleration of a function is going to be with integrals. Uh, now, this next example here, example seven, uh, city bus accelerates as it leaves one stop, then it decelerates as it comes to another stop, so acceleration can't be constant. Uh, the chart below measures the velocity of V in miles per hour between each stop. So part A, what it's asking you to do is asking you to find the distance in miles that the bus travels between every stop using the trapezoid rule. Okay, now if you don't remember the area of a trapezoid, I'll go ahead and write it out for you here. Uh, area of a trapezoid is one half, half, times the sum of the two bases, base 1 plus base 2, times the height. Now, I do want everybody to attempt answering this part uh, for sure on their own, uh, because part B, if you, if you can do part A, then part B is a, a piece of cake. Uh, but I do want everybody to see, can you fill in the rest of the table on your own? Uh, can you fill this stuff in? And the one thing that I'm going to ask you to, uh, I'll give you beforehand is they are doing uh, a little bit of math trickery here, something that you probably have seen in previous uh, word problems in a math class. Here, they're in the problem, they're telling you that you're you're traveling in miles per hour, which is pretty typical because your that's what your speedometer is meant to, to show you. But here, they're showing you time in minutes. Okay. So there is going to be some unit conversion that you have to do uh, first and foremost. So I will give you that hint first. So right now I want everybody to pause the video, try working out A, when you're done, hit play and see what, see what I was uh, doing for my work here. So presuming that you've taken the time, paused the video and worked out part A, uh, let's see what we're gonna be looking at here. Well, the velocity, since we are talking about trapezoids, the velocity are vertical segments. That's what the velocity is going to represent. Uh, these are going to be your bases of your trapezoid, your vertical segments. And here, the change in x, that is going to be your height of the trapezoid. Now, the one thing that we do need to work out first is uh, we do need to know, well, if we're the speedometer is in miles per hour, and the time is in minutes. Hours and minutes, we have to do some kind of conversion here. So delta x, in this case, would be 5 out of 60, which would give us 1 12th uh, feet, uh, miles per minute, essentially, is what we would be looking at. Okay, so that is going to be 1 12th for every 5 minute interval. So hopefully you got that first, because without that, you're you're not going to really get any uh, work done here. Okay. So uh, at time zero, there's not going to be any kind of, you know, motion uh, between you. There, there's not going to be any distance traveled at time zero. That's your initial. So that's that's just zero. So at time zero, you're not traveling anything. So from zero to five minutes, that's the first thing that you're going to find. And I'll go ahead and work that one out here in uh, this color. I think it's on red right now. It's hard to actually, I'm not super great with colors. Sometimes orange and red looks the same. Yeah, that's red. Anyway, uh, for that first five minute interval, uh, so delta X in this case is five minutes. So we are going to use that one twelfth uh, for our uh, height. Uh, this is going to give me an area of one half. The sum of the two bases in this case, I have a base of zero and a base of 18. Those are the two bases that we have. So zero plus 18. And the height, delta x, is one twelfth. So working that out, uh, either in your head, on, a, on paper, or on calculator, this is going to be uh, three fourths or 0.75 however you wanted to write it so three fourths okay and so let's take a look at the next one so the next one I'll do uh, here in this blue color if I can select the right options on my program there we go so let's do the the, the next one in blue so from 5 to 10 so Delta X 
it is still 5. Uh, so I'm going to say 1 half times the two bases, which in this case I have a base of 18 and a base of 6. So 18 plus 6, and the height is 1 12th for the delta x. And so you type that into your calculator, or you work it out in your head, or, or, or whatever the case is, and that gives you 1. So we traveled 1 mile in those 5 minutes. Okay. Now let's take a look at the next one. So let's go purple, I guess, here. Uh, so the next one, we have, if you notice here, delta x from 10 to 20, delta x is 10. So I need to double the 1 12th that we got uh, working out the uh, ratio from hours to minutes. So this will be 1 half, and the basis on this one will be the 6 and the 32. So 6 plus 32. 32. Now in this case, because our delta x doubled, we have to double the 1 12th, so doubled 1 12th times 2 will be 1 6th. 6. Okay? And so again, you work that out on your calculator, or, you know, type it in, do it on your own on the side of the paper or whatever, and this one is going to work out. This one's not a nice decimal number. If you want to write them in decimals, that's fine, but this one's not a nice one. Uh, but as a fraction, this one would be 19 over 6. So 19 over 6. Now the rest of these I'm going to just go ahead and fill in because it's, it's just more of the same. And uh, if you need to see how I'm doing any of these, just, you know, by all means let me know. But I'm going to go ahead and just fill in the rest of these. So from 20 to 25 minutes, uh, we travel one and a half miles. And from 25 to 30 minutes, you travel five thirds of a mile. Uh, from 30 to 40 minutes, again, pay attention to the delta x here. It's not five minutes, it's 10 minutes here. So here we travel four miles. And again, between 40 and 55, pay attention to delta x again, because that is 15 uh, instead of five minutes. And so this would be uh, four and one fourth of a mile. And so from the last five minutes, from 55 to 60, that will be 11 twelfths of a mile. So part B is simply asking you to find the total distance traveled. So whatever your uh, numbers are in that bottom row, you should just add them together. And uh, using the numbers that I have, I got 17 and a quarter miles. Okay, moving on to the last example here. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, a graph. Uh, the graph represents the velocity, okay, uh, of a particle. So again, understand what is velocity. The velocity is going to be the first derivative of the uh, part of the position function, or it will be the antiderivative of the acceleration function. And we are giving a given a time interval from zero to eight, which I don't know. Okay, in seconds. Uh, so we're dealing with inches per second. So we know our unit of measures in uh, length and in time. Okay. So part A, for what intervals of time is a particle moving to the right? And again, by all means, go ahead and try pausing the video or working this out in advance and then just going back and scrolling through the video and see if you agree with the answers that I have or not. If you don't agree with my answers, you need to work your problems out again. Otherwise, let me know uh, what you're what you're seeing. Uh, so for part A, uh, where is the particle moving to the right? Well, the particle is going to be moving to the right anywhere the velocity function is positive. Uh, so I'm not going to try to take a ton of space here to write this out. Uh, so in this case, uh, here, this is going to be positive, And here, this is going to be positive. So anywhere it's above the x-axis, that's where it's going to be moving to the right. Uh, so I'm not going to write out the whole complete sentence that I normally would have done in class, but uh, we have the interval from 0 to 3, and we have the interval from 7 to 8. And the justification is because uh, the velocity function is greater than 0 along those two intervals. Uh, so part B, on what interval is the particle slowing down? Uh, 
uh, well, the particle would be slowing down anywhere that the acceleration and velocity have opposite signs. Uh, so going way back to what we did in, back in Unit 2, uh, if the acceleration and velocity have the same sign, whether they're both positive or both negative, that indicates that the particle is increasing its speed. However, if they have opposite signs, if one is positive and one is negative, uh, that means your particle is going to be slowing down. Okay, so looking at what we have here, we've already established that velocity is positive ooh, along these intervals here. Okay, now the acceleration, you can look at the slope of the velocity function, and let, let's see if yellow can show up okay. Uh, so here, oh, go away, timer. Uh, so here, this is where acceleration is positive. This is where acceleration is zero. I don't know if you guys can see the yellow okay, so let me pick a different color. I just want to be able to have something that's going to kind of contrast the... Oh, I don't want green on green here. Um, okay, let's just let's do purple. Okay. Go away. So here... Purple, I said. Purple. There we go. So here acceleration is positive here at the top acceleration is zero it's just kind of coasting at that point and here acceleration is going to be negative okay so at this point here along this interval from two to three the vo the velocity is positive but the acceleration is negative so that's going to be one interval that we have so from two to three, uh, the velocity is, uh, the particle is going to be slowing down because the signs of velocity and acceleration are different. That's your justification. I'm just not writing it down. Okay, so here, underneath the part, let's go back to look at our function here. So the velocity here, the velocity is negative at, on this interval from three to seven because that's where velocity is uh, less than zero. So all of this stuff here has a negative velocity. So what about the acceleration? Now again, because the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity, we can just look at the slope of the velocity functions to see what acceleration is doing. And again, right here, acceleration is negative. Here, uh, at the where the vertical line or the horizontal line, uh, acceleration is zero. And again, here, acceleration is positive because the slope is going up. So we're looking to see when is it going to have opposite signs. So from it will have opposite signs from 6 to 7 on the uh, on the interval where so it's going to be slowing down there also. So the other interval where it's going to be slowing down will be from 6 Ooh. Give me my I love my pen. I love my pen. 6 to, oops, now I can't, don't know what I'm writing, six to seven, six to seven. Those are going to be, and the justification is because acceleration and velocity will have opposite signs at the, at that point, okay? So now here on, on the screen, obviously you can't see the, the, the graph, but I'll go back to it if we need to, and you can obviously look it out on your paper. Uh, see, when is the particle stopped? in changing directions. Well, when the particle is stopped in changing directions, that's where we're going to see, well, where is the velocity going to be zero? Because changing the, the direction that it's moving is going to be the position function. So if you look at your graph, okay, and let's pick another bright color here. Let's try red. I want to look at the roots of the velocity function because that's where we're going to have change of direction okay so from two to three we know the function is slowing down because the velocity and the acceleration have different signs but starting at three and going to four the acceleration and velocity both have a negative sign so at the root at three we are changing directions and it'll be the same thing at seven we're going to be changing directions so where's the particle stopped and changing directions well it's going to be where the root of the velocity function is when, and again, I'm not gonna, well, I have a little bit of space here. So the particle is stopped. Let's see if I can write this out okay. 
the because my pen isn't the most fantastic thing in the world. The particle is stopped. And changes direction. When x is equal to 3, and when x is equal to 7, and the justification is because that is where the velocity function is equal to 0, and changes from positive to negative, positive to negative. So in what time intervals is the acceleration zero? We've already kind of you know looked at that where the, the horizontal segments were going to be. Uh, so the acceleration is zero from one to two and from 4 to 7 and justify and so the justification here would be because that is where the velocity function v of t is equal to 0. So that's going to wrap up our revisiting position velocity acceleration with integrals another look at particle motion uh, I appreciate your patience, and I know the videos are long, but these do typically take us a full period, if not more, to get through in class. Uh, so do your best to get through the videos, work out the examples as much as possible on your own, and uh, if you need further explanation, be sure to contact me via the Google Classroom, and uh, we will sort things out from there. And uh, keep in mind, we will be able to do uh, remote chatting uh, with Zoom or Microsoft Teams or something like that. Uh, but until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your time. I hope everybody's doing well. And uh, I really look forward to seeing you guys face-to-face -face, uh, soon at some point. So until then, take care. Talk to you later.